hey, I want to talk to you about pH. All right, a lot of people get really confused about it. I'm not going to go into the numbers. I'm going to talk about low pH, neutral, and high pH. And when you walk inside of a house, if you've got a good pH pen, you can go ahead and identify what condition the car is in. Is it in an acidic state? Is it in an alkaline state? Or a spot? What if you've got a certain spot and the customer doesn't know what it is? Well, you can go over there and you can identify that spot. You can also identify if the client's been using maybe some Resolve or different problems, products like that in traffic patterns. Now she's got some high, high pH residue in there. So you want to adjust your chemistry to go ahead and address the cleaning and soil conditions properly. The biggest problem is people do not understand how to use these pens correctly. I see them on the internet all the time. Oh, look, this is the pH. This is the pH. However, they're getting it wrong. So I'm here to help you get it right right now. That way, when you're using fine products, something like BioPro or Spike or Grout Master or Alkaline Rinse or any of our products, that way you can uh, adjust your chemistry to the pH that's already existing inside of the home. Let's go ahead and get started. Brian with Truck Mount Forms here. I'm here to explain what pH is and how to correctly take readings on it. Uh, just like different water temperatures can affect your cleaning, the pH uh, reading is actually even more important. Now there are several different ways to take pH readings. You can buy strips uh, which will give you a, uh, a color that you match up with a card which will give you a fairly good idea on which side of the pH scale you're dealing with. Or you can get a digital pH meter. Now what these meters actually do is it reads the positively charged hydrogen ions in the liquid. Uh, and that actually is what pH stands for, potential hydrogen or power of hydrogen. And uh, the more concentrated these ions are, the more aesthetic the liquid you're testing is. Now, with these particular meters, they have a glass bulb and a plastic bulb. Now these bulbs that actually take the reading are uh, filled with potassium and has a special coating on them. So to correctly take care of these delicate meters, uh, you need to make sure that these bulbs do not dry out. Also you want to make sure that you don't mistake these pH meters for a TDS meter or a PPM meter. What these do is actually read the totally dissolved solids inside of a liquid. So a TDS meter stands for totally dissolved solids and it's going to give you a PPM meter which is parts per million. So it's, it measures very, very, very small traces of what used to be solids in a liquid. Now uh, these two meters are actually the same. This is called a PPM meter and this is a TDS meter. A TDS meter gives you a PPM reading. So, but we'll save that for a different video. With your pH meters, um, not only do you need to take special care of what actually does the reading, which is these bulbs, but you want to make sure that they stay calibrated. So if you do not use these very often, they can become uncalibrated and the bulbs can dry out. Uh, so to get a, if you haven't used yours in quite a while, you want to go ahead and sit them in some distilled water, I'll say for about an hour or so, just to completely moisturize that diode in there. So pH is actually on a scale from 1 to 14, 7 being right in the middle, which would give, be an actual neutral. Now, distilled water should read about a seven right in the middle. Now, the reason we use distilled water is because there may be some totally dissolved solids in your tap water, uh, which would alter the pH reading. So when calibrating these things, first we want to make sure that the diode is not dried out. Sometimes you can see a salt or a film over them. The difference between these two meters is one has a glass bulb and one has a plastic bulb. Now the glass bulb is great for taking readings in liquid because if I was to take a reading on a carpet, I would have to make sure that that wet fiber made complete contact with that bulb. 
The benefit behind having a plastic bulb is that it can be flat. So just direct contact should actually give you a reading. Now when you find a stain on a carpet, most likely it's going to be dry. So if I was to take a dry reading, I'm probably not going to get a very good result. Just like urine goes down as an acid and dries as an alkaline crystal. So the first thing you want to do when identifying a stain is you want to moisturize it with distilled water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of distilled water put it on the stain as you see this is a stain this is this is a resistant carpet so I'm going to go ahead and rub that in a little bit and now that it's moisturized I'll give it just a few moments to mix in and then I will go ahead and take a reading that way so you definitely need to take a moist reading with a pH meter before I take a reading with one of my pH meters, I want to make sure that it's giving me a somewhat of an accurate reading on something that should be neutral, like water. Uh, tap water should read fairly neutral, but distilled water should read about a 7. Now, temperature is important when taking these readings. Um, hot water will actually lower the pH reading but not actually the pH. So we start off as a, at a neutral temperature. This water should be about 77 degrees, which is a neutral temperature. So this particular one in the middle is your neutral. This is just distilled water. Now I had put a buffer in it because what these buffers do is it keeps it at that pH reading no matter what. Uh, you can't really alter a uh, buffering solution when it comes to pH uh, testing kits. So what I like to do is now that I know that this is neutral and I know the temperature is neutral, I'll go ahead and take a reading directly. And let's see, 7.1. So we know that that's neutral. Now each one of these meters are calibrated slightly different. Um, but one thing does stay the same is when you calibrate them, you always want to start with your neutral and then go into your acid and then calibrate it for your alkaline. Um, so let's do that now. I'll go ahead and this particular one has two buttons on it. It has an on and then a temperature slash calibration. Now both these meters will actually tell you what the temperature of the water is because like I said before that, that will affect the reading. It does not affect the actual pH, it just affects the pH readings. For example, if I was testing 200 degree water, my neutral should be about 5.5. So let's start with the glass bulb. I've cut it on and it's just giving me just a random reading in the air. It's probably what is going on with the uh, what I've done so far. So I'll go ahead and stick that in here. As you see, the reading is increasing up to a neutral, so that's pretty good. So while it is actually submerged in the buffer solution, I will hold the calibration button down for about five seconds. I'll let off. And now it's blinking at 6.86. .6. I'm just going to leave it in there until it stops blinking. And now it's giving me a reading of a 7.02. So now that we know that that's calibrated. So. I'm going to take it and I'm going to neutralize it again by sticking it into the distilled water, giving it just a moment to kind of dry off a little bit. Then I'm going to go straight to the aesthetic. Stick that in here, hold the button down, let off. Now it's reading neutral. I'll click it one more time. Now it's reading at 4.0. I'm going to hold it in there till it stops blinking and now it's giving me a reading of 4.24 and it's fluctuating so that's telling me that that is calculated and that has been calibrated also okay so again I'm going to neutralize it Just wash it off here 
and I'm going to put it in the alkaline based buffer hold the button down for five seconds so it's in calibration mode now it's blinking neutral, it's blinking aesthetic, and now it's blinking at 9.18, which is alkaline. All right, now once that's done, you know that this is correctly calibrated because these digital pH meters actually will give you a pH reading down to the 100th. Now when trying to identify a stain, the easiest way is to go ahead and test the pH. Then I'll know what product I need to use to correct that stain. So I take just a little cap full, not even a whole cap, that's actually a little bit too much, of distilled water, which I know will reads a neutral as is, and I can even test that water just to make sure that my calibrations have been correct. I'll put, a, put some on the stain, and let's see, let that soak in. cut my meter on and do a reading here. Now, if I think it's something on the low side of the pH, some sort of acidic, um, like a coffee stain or, or something, um, but it reads quite the opposite. What you might actually be reading is the alkali alkaline based product that a customer tried to clean it up with. So. Um, but if someone gets coffee down, which is an acid type stain, and they're trying to basically clean it with an alkaline based cleaner, uh, all they're actually doing is neutralizing it. So uh, we know when we clean carpets, we want to start with an alkaline. And uh, if necessary, we'll go to an acid based product, but always end with an alkaline. Um, one more thing before I wrap this up is I want to uh, express how important it is to take care of these delicate instruments. Uh, you always, this particular one, uh, you want to make sure you put your top on it and keep that top on. That's going to keep any moisture from coming out and drying up that diode because then you want to go ahead and stick it in there for about an hour. Uh, this particular one, which seems more durable, um, it actually has a small sponge in the bottom of it and what, I, what I've done is I put a little bit of acid based buffer inside of here and let's get rid of that and you can see it has a sponge in it so this diode especially the plastic one uh, you're going to want it to stay moist so we take that little sponge let's stick it in the cap there we are get it flat in there now I've got a low pH soaked sponge in the bottom of that thing. Now that's going to help it from not drying out, being a plastic bulb. So there are several things to keep these accurate. Uh, fresh batteries, um, making sure the diode does not dry out, and periodically doing calibrations on them. Well, I hope that helped a little bit with understanding what pH is and how to correctly take readings on it. Um, it's really good to know instead of just experimenting with different products onto a stain, which you can actually lock the stain in by using the wrong product. Also keep in mind that the customer may have tried to clean it themselves with the wrong product. Uh, different chemicals on both sides of the pH scale uh, doesn't necessarily balance out the pH scale. What it would actually do is it'd be counterproductive uh, just because something is just because I have an aesthetic liquid doesn't mean I can actually add any alkaline based liquid to it to neutralize it. You want to make sure that, that whatever the customer may have already tried to use to clean that stain isn't going to be counterproductive by whatever product that you choose. Um, again, I hope that helped everyone out somewhat. Uh, again, I appreciate you tuning in and this is Brian with Truck Mount Forms and I uh, hope you guys have a great day.